Hello, YouTube. <laughs> Welcome back to another exciting Cooking with Denoy episode. As uh, people seem to really enjoy the cooking videos and the eating videos, I think I want to be doing more of those. Especially since I still have a big, huge pile of wood to go through <laughs> from the tree. Denoy versus the tree. Anyhow, um, I am going to go ahead and make some um, pork chops today. These are pork chops that I bought. Assorted pork chops, USDA pork family pack, four eighty eight. Got that the other day at the uh, Patrick uh, Commissary. Yeah. Anyhow, um, we're gonna cook all that up. That's like at least six pork chops. I won't be eating it all. I'm gonna be cooking some to save, and then some to take for my friend Bill. Uh, Bill, if you'll recall, is my um, Ben, who was my former boss, anyhow, he, he had a stroke. Long story short, you know, he, he's um, partially paralyzed, and I'm kind of sort of helping him out. So I'm going to cook up some um, pork chops to prepare some meals, pork chop meal to take for him as like a, like a MRE or meal ready to eat, like a TV dinner, basically. But instead of junky food, we're going to try to make stuff that's home cooked. Anyhow, um... I have put together the, the wood here from the, the tree over there, and underneath I have, um, I actually have some um, junk mail under there. <laughs> so, good to use junk mail for recycling and some um, paper towels that came from, um, I think like, a, I don't know, McDonald's or whatever. You know, they give you the, the little paper thingies. I'm going to put on some canola oil, just a little bit. I'm just going to pour a little bit on here to help the... Uh, the thing burn a little bit better so when I light it I want it to kind of stay lit I guess you maybe don't need it but I don't think it hurts to add a little oil just to help the uh, the fire burn a little bit better the wood is uh, fairly dry so it'll burn pretty well so maybe about a cap or two full of uh, um, canola oil and we'll light it up and let it burn down so here we go. Get one fire going and we'll start another one. We'll start in multiple spots. We'll start our fire here and get the system burning. All right, three, maybe four, five. All right, we'll try to get the fire burning and then um, let the wood burn down a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our grill on it. And we'll start cooking. For now, I guess you can just enjoy the fire. And listen to the birds. <laughs> I, I feel so blessed. I have my own house. You know, and it's all paid for. It might not be much to look at. And it still needs some work. But it's paid for. And uh, my cost of living is cheaper to live in this house than it was living in my van. So, or the RV especially. You know, if you have to pay for RV parking uh, that runs anywhere depending on where you are from roughly 500 to 2000 a month just to park an RV. And you know, housing right now is very expensive. This is a two bedroom unit with one bath. Um, I think rental on these things are probably sixteen hundred to two thousand dollars to to rent like a two bedroom, one bath. This is about seven hundred square foot, eight hundred, seven hundred and fifty square foot or so of living space. Um, and I, I got this nice yard with birds, and so grateful to be here. Um, grateful for all the viewers who who helped me out along the way. And encouraged me and helped me um, survive with the YouTube channel. As well as people like Timothy and um, Connie and Kira and, and many numerous others who uh, stepped in to help me basically survive long enough to make it to this point. Anyhow, we're letting the fire burn right now. Um, it is going to go ahead and, and hopefully uh, turn that wood into charcoal. It's interesting how... As it burns, you can see uh, the gases and stuff being released from the wood, making it burn even hotter. 
Actually, if, if you look at the flame, it's kind of yellowish orange, so it's really not that hot. Only hot enough to burn. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think like uh, flame color, if it's like uh, more towards bluish white, that's hotter. So butane and propane flames are hotter than this. Wood fire tends to be kind of yellowish orange. Uh, if nothing else, it feels nice and warm. Uh, it's a little bit chilly here in Florida today, probably in the 50s right now, maybe the low 50s. I'm out here in, in t-shirts and stuff, but the flames are actually keeping me pretty warm. So we'll let that burn down a little bit. And while, while that is burning and we're making charcoal to, to cook our pork chops, I'm going to go ahead and prepare the mix and I'm going to put the coat with the pork chops. So I'm just going to pour in some um, soy sauce. That's going to be my base. And essentially what I'm going to do is just coat the pork chops with soy sauce and then pour body a complete and um, some um, chopped onions on it and put it on the grill. In the meantime, we're going to move this away. Fire hazard here. Move all this away for now. It is hot. I, I can feel the heat. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and do that. And maybe take some of the um, pork chops and just kind of let it soak. The pork chops are actually frozen. I think you're supposed to let stuff thaw out, but you know, I, I'm one of those people who don't really plan ahead. So the meat was frozen and I'm going to be cooking it frozen, assuming I can separate it. Might have to stop filming to uh, separate the meat. All right, I was able to separate the meat still frozen which is kind of bad <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna just marinate the frozen pork chops in some soy sauce set that aside marinate another one so really simple marinade the um the soy sauce has a lot of salt in it and will really enhance the flavor and a lot of times when people marinate they soak stuff overnight or you know at least a couple hours typically when i cook because i'm kind of lazy and you know kind of last minute preparation i don't really marinate stuff overnight i typically just coat it just like this actually I don't even coat it usually I put the meat on the grill and then I pour some um, soy sauce on it but I thought it might be more economical to just put soy sauce in a, um, a plate like this and get it totally coated that way the taste is evenly spread the saltiness will be evenly spread and um, the meat, when we cook it, will have saltiness all around. All right, chunk of our pork chop that had frozen and didn't want to separate from the pack. So, just gonna marinate it all. Get that soy sauce over everything. Make it salty. It's interesting how salt is such an important flavor to our taste buds. Salt makes everything taste better, which is kind of bad, you know. If, I, I guess we require salt, but too much salt, which it seems like we have in our food, is bad. And I, I suppose if, if you're trying to cut down on salt maybe you, you can skip this step but I really do think the um, the uh, soy sauce adds a lot to the flavor and it's kind of um, for me when I try to make pork chops without um, soy sauce it doesn't taste as good the soy sauce really does make a huge difference and um, I recommend it 
Okay, so we got the soy sauce there, and we got one last piece. I think it's more economical to uh, coat them like this than just to pour it onto the meat, which is how I normally do it. But because we're cooking on a grill, I figured I might as well go ahead and coat it and try to do a good job of coating it. That way, every little bit of goodness will have some soy sauce in it. Okay, the, the fire at this point has um, burned down quite a bit. And I think we're almost, we're pretty much ready to cook. It looks like we got charcoal. We got some flame, which people say you really shouldn't cook with the flame. You should cook with the charcoal here, not the flame. But I'm going to try to cook with the flame because I kind of like the flame. I know it kind of sears the meat a little bit and might be kind of bad to cook with the flame. But I, I kind of like the flame, so we're going to put this on here. Put our grill. Pick up the grill if I can. Pick up the grill. Oops. Pick up the grill. There we go. We got our grill there now. And now I think we're going to go ahead and even with the fire. Because um, I, I kind of want the meat a little bit seared. I kind of think it... It gives it a more um, burnt taste. <laughs> Not so much burnt, but... Um, Not so much burnt, per se, but a grilled taste. And what I'm going to do is do each one. Put some of this on here. And I know when I flip it, I'm going to lose all that um, seasoning I just put on it. But we're going to go ahead and do that and do it with each one. I'm going to coat it with some badia, which makes everything taste good, and some chopped onion. Give it a little bit of flakiness. I'm going to take another one, another piece of meat here. We coat it again real quick. One last pass. Bring her up. Put some of that uh, magical badia. I don't know what I'd do without Badia. And some onions, chopped onions. Very simple recipe for delicious pork chops. Oops. Now we're gonna try to get this on here. All right. Some more body on this side. some more chopped onion. Mm, doesn't that look good? And we're making we're making a whole bunch of these. Why? Because I'm gonna cook these and save them. I'm gonna I'm gonna end up eating maybe one tonight for dinner. Maybe we'll do a mukbang on that. And then, um, the others I'm, I'm going to save for myself as well as my friend Bill. He's going to get barbecued pork chops. So, I hope he likes pork chops. Because that's what I'm making. Barbecued pork chops. Mm -mm -mm. Looks like the fire is out. more on here. You know, cooking like this um, makes me feel, miss a little bit of my days living in a van because I did a lot of cooking, not, not using um, this pre-made barbecue thing from Walmart or wherever you buy it. Actually, I don't know where they bought it. I picked this barbecue thing up for free when I lived in the RV, you know, at the RV park, at the campground. People throw it away when they when they move. They throw stuff like that away. So I went to throw trash away, and I saw that somebody had dumped it. 
so I just grabbed it. So this barbecue thing was free for me. And it's nice and compact, so it's good for cooking, you know, if you're cooking for one or two people. Although, honestly, in this case, I could be cooking for five or six people. Because I think there's enough room to put the, the meat out there to cook for six people, I think. We'll find out. Here is our piece with the broken center. We're going to try to get that thing over here and see if we can't get this to cook. Alright, center goes on and we're going to put our body all over it. That one is out. That's why I brought two. Alright, that's a better one. Better flakes. Badia. It makes everything taste good. And we'll pour some on here. Flip it over. You know, trying to make room here. Make room for one more. It's gotta be room for one more pork chop. One more pork chop. Let's see. Room for one more pork chop. It's the one with the chunk missing. All right. It smells so good. Mm. And our last piece. Get all that delicious soy sauce and it looks like a perfect fit I can squeeze it in here just squeeze it right on in looks like a good fit and we're gonna pour some body on it some more crushed chopped onions Mm. Flip it upside down. Some more body. -a. Chopped onions. And we are looking good. All right. What I'm going to do now pour some of this leftover yeah isn't that awesome let's pour leftover soy sauce all over everything for even more saltiness pour all this extra soy sauce let's not let it go to waste mm. yeah soy sauce Mmm, mmm, mmm. Be nice and salty. And what we'll do is uh, flip everything over and then cover it and let it bake, kind of. You can see it's already seared and smelling really good. Looking really good, smelling really, really good. So we're going to try to get this to stay right side up here. One of our pork chops. All right. And let this flip over, flip over. Look at that. Flip over our friend here. Oops, got the little piece that's not cooking so well. Flip over this guy. I'd say it's almost done, but we're gonna let it kind of bake a little bit by putting the lid on it. Let it bake for maybe another 5-10 minutes and take a look at it. Alright, let's take a look and see if it's done. Still see a little bit of red coming up from this piece. Uh, this piece isn't done, but the center one looks like it's about done. Take the center one out 
And we're gonna put this one here right in the center. And this one looks like it's about done, almost done. We're gonna flip it over a little bit. It will let this cook a little bit longer while I cut this one open and take a look and see um, how done it is or isn't. I don't have a tripod handy, so I'm going to have to pause this while I cut it, but I'll go ahead and cut it and show you what it looks like inside. All right, I have sliced it open, and you can see it is completely white. I can get this thing to focus here. It is white, which means the meat is indeed cooked. So this piece is cooked, and I'm going to be eating it with rice and pepper sauce. The rest I will let cook for a little bit longer, and we'll go ahead and remove it, and then um, bag it up for eating later. And also for preparing some um, meals to go for my friend Bill. Alright, to eat my um, pork chops that I just made, I am going to prepare a pepper sauce. Basically, you're just going to have some uh, Thai chili peppers. You can use any kind of peppers you like or have on hand. Thai chili peppers are pretty spicy. And I kind of like stuff spicy, so I'll be using the um, Thai chili peppers. And what I do to, to get them to last is when I buy the fresh packs from the grocery store, I as soon as I get home, I put it into a Ziploc bag and put it in the freezer. So that kind of preserves it a little bit for a couple weeks at least, if not a month or two. Um, and then you can just use lemon or lime juice and then um, fish sauce. And if you don't like fish sauce uh, or don't have access to fish sauce, you'd probably use a little bit of salt. The fish sauce is kind of salty and tastes like salt, but I think in some ways a little bit better, but it's actually like fermented fish guts dripping. <laughs> so kind, kind of gross. If, if you want to look how, up how fish sauce is made on YouTube, you might not want to eat fish sauce. Like my, I shouldn't have showed my wife. I shouldn't have told her how it was made because now she refuses to eat fish sauce. But you know, in Asian cooking, fish sauce is used in everything. Essentially, it's salt, but they get it from fermented like fish guts that have dripped down. Ugh, it's kind of gross, but it's still delicious. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and chop this up and then uh, prepare the sauce. All right, we're going to go ahead and um, start by simply just chopping some of this. I chop them into like bite-sized pieces. Some people actually prefer to just like chew, you know, a whole chili pepper or half a chili pepper or whatever. I'm not that brave. I usually have these little pieces so I can control the amount of hotness I want on each bite. So by cutting them into small little pieces, I can decide if I want it really hot, I might grab two pieces, three pieces. If I don't want it too hot, you know, I'll only grab one piece. But the um, the saltiness of the, the salty bitterness, sourness of the fish sauce and the lemon juice or the lime juice, I think to some extent counteracts the uh, the pepper, makes it not as hot. I don't know. Or maybe it makes it even hotter. <laughs> I just know that um, I like pork chops, but I like it even more when I have the, the fish sauce to eat with it. Pork seems to taste really good with um, this chili fish, I mean, uh, this spicy chili sauce that I'm making. Real simple. Um, what I do is I usually make a batch and I put it in a bowl or something and then I can save it in the refrigerator. So you don't have to you don't have to use it all at once, you know. And I don't know if it ever goes bad because it's it's sitting in um, fish sauce, which is full of salt. So that's a natural preservative. Anyhow, we got all that. And what we're gonna do is just Put it in here, get every little last bit of pepper and stuff that we can 
scrounge up, right? And we're going to add a little bit of lemon or lime. In this case, it is lemon. I'm just going to pour it right in there. Okay, that should be about enough right there. And then, squirt in some fish sauce. How much fish sauce? How much lemon? I just kind of eyeball it, but probably, like, you can look and kind of judge. But I would say maybe one-third fish sauce to the lemon juice, you know? And then, um, that's it. Get rid of this little bean stock. But basically, then what you do is you just, you, you get a bite of the, um, you take the rice and you take the pork and then you put this on it, which I'll show you in a, a mukbang video. So we're going to go ahead and, and put together the serving and then um, we'll start the mukbang. All right, here then essentially it's going to be my serving. It's just got rice and uh, pork chops and um, pepper sauce. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you wanted a full-blown meal, you could have vegetables on the side, salad. I don't feel like salad today, so I'm just going to have the pork chops with the rice and the fish sauce. Without further ado, let's go ahead and um, do our mukbang.